And so before I finally leave this game, I kind of wanted to give my final review because it was a it was a good experience. However, in true gacha gaming fashion, of course, we had to leave with some freaking drama. Today, I am going to address this drama. However, it is not the reason that I am quitting. I am quitting the game for other reasons. So my guys, I'm not going to blue ball you. I'm going to start off with this drama over here and then I will walk through the game itself and all the great things about it and all the not so great things. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is my last Archery Gear Fusion video. Uh, but we'll have a live stream, I think. And so let's kick things off with the drama over here. Of course, it's our Gacha Gaming. And so for those of you who aren't following Artery Gear Fusion, we recently got a collab with Atelier. And in this collab, we will be predominantly rolling for two characters. This one in the middle, Ryza, as well as this one on the left, Leela. And unfortunately, the drama revolves around these two characters and their upgradability and their viability. Let's jump into it and let's let's talk about this one. So the TLDR is that Artery Gear Fusion locks skill upgrades for collaboration units behind a real money paywall. Yes, that is kind of factual. And let's let's begin with the facts before we go anywhere, okay? So for those of you who are not familiar with the Artery Gear Fusion upgrading system, essentially it is the same as Epic Sevens if you have played that. But in a nutshell, what you do is that you get a character and then for that character, that character has three skills in which you can use some materials to rank up that skill. As you can see, level one, level two, level three, level four, and you do that three times. Now, what this post is saying is that you need to actually pay to upgrade those skills. The ones that I just showed you over here, these ones. And yes, there is an element of truth to that. So if I come over here, this was, uh, <laughs> the CN bros are not not familiar with this controversy. And so what this chart represents is the amount of materials that you actually get from the game and the amount of materials that you do need to actually pull for or pay money for. The first column is the total amount of materials that you require. So for this one over here, you need 33 of these skill chips to be able to max out the riser and then another 33 for the Leela. That means that in total, you will need 66 chips to max out all of these skills for both riser this one over here as well as Leela. Now coming back to here, this column represents the amount of these chips that you get naturally. So if we need 66 in total and we're only getting 34 naturally, combining that with the third column over here in which we are getting 10 more from pulling the characters themselves, that means that we are going to need to fork out money to get another 22 of these because these chips over here, they are not universal. They are collab specific. And so my guys, this circumstance is what this post is describing. It is essentially saying, oh, we have to fork out money for 22 of these skill chips to be able to max out our Atelier characters. However, it doesn't really stop there because there are a couple of other upgrade systems such as your dupe system, such as your unique equipment. And so using the same logic that I just ran through for the skill chips, you can see over here, we need 68 of these things over here to max out the riser. We get 37, we get 10 from pulling, and then so we are in deficit of 21. So yeah, that is the facts over there. We are definitely in deficit and you definitely need to pull out your wallet to be able to max out your characters. Now, dupes, kind of like an industry standard in which like uh, you pay to win a little bit more on the dupes. Fair enough. However, in terms of the skill materials themselves, and this is where the opinions start coming in. This is my opinion. This is kind of, this is not really cool, man. It's not really cool how we have to fork out for 22 skill chips in order to max out these characters. Like personally, I'm not overly bothered by this because it's a lot of resource management, right? I am close to a low spender, like a mid low spender. And so I would look at these skills, I'd be like, oh, this skill gets mark chance increased by 10%. This one gets lower cooldown by one round. So I'll probably be like doing something like max these five or max these four, and then get up to number three for this one. And then for Leela, I'll look down and I'll be like, oh, Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. I, I kind of want all the way down to four. I kind of want all five of these and then I kind of want four. Okay. That's a, that, that's a lot, man. <laughs> so yes, from a low spender or free to play player perspective, um, this kind of does suck quite a fair bit. The fact that they are gating their core skills, these skills that they use all the time behind a paywall. The other ones are a little bit more acceptable in which like you can't max out all of their dupes system thing. However, not being able to max out their unique equipment equipment that Honestly, that kind of sucks as well. But to me, that's a little bit more of an accepted industry standard. I mean, it doesn't make it good, 
but it's a little more accepted. All right, and so that is the situation in a nutshell. Now, what I have read in a couple of different threads is that, uh, and I don't know if it's in this one, but this system over here, I believe actually only happens this time because CN had a similar outrage and they changed all of the other collabs moving forward. And so what that means is that if you are willing to kind of bite the bullet for this one, just kind of bite the pillow and let them go, Neh, then the good news is that it does get better. All right, so that is the situation in a nutshell. However, the drama doesn't actually stop there because with this Reddit post, there were actually a couple of other Reddit posts that were countering what was being said. Those Reddit posts are now unfortunately taken down. However, it was essentially defending this one over here. And so as you can imagine, we've got two spectrums of uh, arguments, right? On one side, we've got people saying like, oh man, it's just like a little bit of spend. Don't worry too much about it. It's limited. It's collab character anyway. Uh, companies got to eat. And then on the other hand, we've got a group of people that are like, man, this is not really acceptable that you're paywalling their core skills. And so as you can imagine, this uh, this led to a little bit of debate. This led to a couple of uh, uh, a content creator getting involved and, um, and a couple of different rules like this one over here. And so yeah, that's the drama in a nutshell. No. It is not the reason why I am quitting this game. However, that is going to conclude that segment. And so what I did want to do is run through this game, tell you where I got to and kind of talk about what I did like and what I did not like. So let's start off with what I liked about this game. And for me, the number one thing was the production value and the performance. As you can see from the home screen, the live 2D is actually absolutely fantastic. And if I was able to go into these ones, do these have live 2D? Unfortunately, they don't, but you can see like the art is absolutely top tier. It is on the looter side. I'm not a massive fan of the loot, but it's kind of, okay, it's kind of acceptable to me. And as you can see, as I flick through this, the performance is actually quite decent, right? We've got the 60 FPS persistent. The load screens are almost non-existent. It's just a great way to feel. And everything is absolutely snappy, right? Like freaking almost instant load times. That's pretty freaking crazy. The next thing to praise about this game is the quality of life. However, I'm not gonna go too deep into that because I think everybody knows about the quality of life of this, but the TLDR is essentially anything that you wanted from quality of life perspective, it's probably in here. From auto battling to like stacking to auto redispatch over here, so quick collect and dispatch. This is going to, if I had like six of them running, it would have actually autoed all of them. Back over here in the auto gear system, I can actually make equipment sets and name them and then I could edit them within here. It's honestly really freaking fantastic. However, the absolute best quality of life feature is actually in the fleet over here. So the, I think it's a science vessel. And so as you can see on the screen, we have a fusing and a cast system. So one of the main issues in a lot of these gacha games is that equipments suck, right? So if I open up an equipment, you can see we have a main stat, speed main stat, and then we have a bunch of substats. And this problem is prevalent in Genshin. It's prevalent in Summoner's War, Epic 7, and other games that use this kind of thing. However, the fuse system that I just showed you essentially is saying, okay, well, let's take a weapon or any type of equipment, I can go ahead and select this one. So this one has a speed main stat and I can use the substats from another piece of gear. Like this one, for example, critical, critical damage, attack. I can select that. And then as you can see on the screen, you can merge these substats into this piece over here, which had the main stat that I wanted as well as the set. So this 100%, 100% mitigates a lot of the RNG that is required. And therefore it's gonna be a lot easier to make really, really cracked out pieces of gear. Year. However, on top of that, what's really nice is that you can actually see all of the stats for the equipment at its most upgraded rank. So as you can see over here, this thing is only plus 12. However, we know that it has an attack 23.8% on the last slot. So if I hit plus 15, I am going to unlock that. And I didn't have to pour any resources into it to find out. Here is another example where I click into this one. This one is plus zero and you can see all of the stats already. I've really just got to emphasize, Artery Gear does a fantastic job at minimizing the RNG. It doesn't, it doesn't completely remove it because otherwise, you know, what exactly do you have to work towards, but it minimizes a lot of it. And so that is going to bring me to what exactly I didn't like about this game because, you know, just from a glance, I like the majority of it. They are relatively generous, kind of. Although I got to say the currency income has slowed down significantly, but yeah, let's kick things off with again, the art. For me, it's kind of like, I'm starting to realize that I play a lot of games for their characters. I don't particularly feel invested into this ghost character or this Shinobu character. Um, maybe timing a little bit, 
maybe 04. But at the end of the day, especially because of my own preferences, there weren't overly many characters that I like really, really liked. Like maybe uh, the Milvis. I liked Ginga quite a fair bit. Sirius, you know, she's pretty cool, but in general, kind of like it's okay the art style and the art quality is good but like it's just not really my style you know the second thing is the ai combat so as you can see over here the proxy combat essentially it's going to allow you to turn off the game but whilst your game is off you can actually farm this stage that i'm in 30 times now why don't you just let us skip it <laughs> at this point at this point it's kind of like well we can just like throw it all in and then they're making us run out 30 runs, but just let us skip it, man. And I say that, and it sounds like a really big deal, but it really isn't. But if I was to find anything to nitpick, that's probably one of them. Because when I come back over here, and then I look at this plan A, plan A thing, and the fact that you can configure the logic of their skill orders, even in auto mode, man, this game has very little to fault. Like even just jumping into battle, for example, let me just show you like the battle system itself. I am quite a fan. I am a fan of this turn-based system in which you can, I can get stabbed by giant centaur but the whole game design in terms of like the combat system and the synergies that you can actually create so for example i can use this to speed up one of my other characters and then i can use this character to do big damage etc etc like i really am a fan of this a lot of people have expressed that they don't like this chibi system i actually think it's fine especially with like the, the pretty crazy animations that we get with some of it like look at that Bam! So yeah, me personally, I'm kind of fine with that. However, that kind of brings the question as to then like, if I like it so much, and if there aren't so many things I don't like, why exactly did I quit? I was kind of like looking at the end game content and what exactly I had to do because they flood you with the stamina potions, right? They flood you with a whole bunch of progression, right? You see that over there, you see that over there, you see more over there and you see more over there and it just keeps going. And like, especially for gifts and stuff, they will just throw more at you. And so in terms of progression, the majority of the progression was gonna be focused on the raids that you saw before. These ones right here in which we're gonna have to be actually farming this for a very long time to be getting like the perfect substats or the perfect stats, etc., etc., to refine those really nice gears. Now that's pretty okay with me considering like, you know, I freaking praised the system into, into heaven. But then I was kind of feeling like, what exactly am I doing that for? Am I doing that for the PVP? Because the PVP isn't really overly interesting. Or like, I'm just not really interested in it, right? Or should I be holding out for like some of the future content with your alliance? I was not exactly a fan of what I saw. I mean, it's not bad. I just didn't personally like it. And so considering I'm not exactly like a big fan of the characters themselves either, it kind of left me in a place where I was feeling like, I'm not sure why I'm grinding. I mean, I do know why I'm grinding, but like it was kind of a little bit too superficial for me. Like, um, I, yeah, I didn't really have a purpose anymore kind of thing. Wow, existential crisis. Like if I was to talk about some other games that I play, Princess Connect, I actually like a lot of the characters, but I also have Clan Battle to play. For Blue Archive, I actually do enjoy the raids and well, I hate PvP, but I still actually enjoy the raids and a lot of the characters. For Genshin Impact, I like how casual it is and I do like a lot of the characters. That's probably one of the games that I like the characters the most in. And so when I weighed all of those things against like this, I was like, ah, oh, I think it's time to go. And so that, my guys, is going to bring us to now. It is indeed time to go, but not before we actually do a temple on this because I just noticed before I think we got a, uh, a free tenor. So I'm going to smash this tenor right now. However, I will have one more final stream in which I will be pulling for the Atelier Riser. So my guys, do join me for that final stream. But for now, let's smash this and let's see what we get. Give me the orange. Come on, give me the orange. Come on, give me the orange. Give me the orange. All right. All right. Yeah, that looks like depression to me. Okay, yeah, uh, no, nah, I'm quitting this game, huh? <laughs> Freaking hell, man, what the freak? I am not saying that the gacha is the reason that I am quitting. I am, I am not saying that at all. But my guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this video and the end of my artery gear journey. And so my dudes, it is here where I do want to hear from you guys. How has your archery gear journey been? Like, are you guys still playing the game or have you guys actually let go of it before me? Let me know down in the comment section below and I would really appreciate it if you actually left something. So thank you guys. If you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like on it, subscribing to the channel and or turning on that notification bell. But otherwise, my guys, as Ginga once said for the last time, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.
Bye-bye.